Hey guys, Jade Holding from Photo Factor. If you've only just joined us, we're currently working on chapter five of getting to know some Photoshop basics in this three part series. We've been talking about how to make selections to a particular area of the image to make fine tuned adjustments. And so we've already shown you in the first part of the series how to use the, the marquee tool. In the second part of the series, we showed you how to use the quick selection tool as well as the lasso tool. And now I'm going to show you in the third session how to fine tune a selection. And so let's dive straight in. And so in our previous tutorial, we showed you how to make use of the quick selection tool. We're gonna start off by doing that again using the quick selection tool. And what we want to adjust this time is this candle here, the larger candle sitting in the middle. And so let's zoom in. We can do that by using the zoom tool over here. And just click a few times until we're happy. And we go back to the quick selection tool. Remember the keyboard shortcut is W. And so once we're on that tool, we can use a, a fairly big brush um, by using the square bracket keys on your keyboard, you can go use the left square bracket to make it smaller or the right square bracket to make it bigger. We want a fairly biggish brush and we just click on the candle once, make the brush a little bit smaller and let's deselect this area here. So we head on over to the subtract from selection option in the options bar, make the brush a little bit smaller. Right, and so I showed you in the previous tutorial how by toggling between the add subtraction and minus subtraction or using the lasso tool, how we can subtract or add to the selection. I'm gonna show you another really great way and that would be by making use of the select and mask option, which you'll find here in the options toolbar or you can head on over to the top menu, click on select and scroll on down here to the select and mask tool. Notice the keyboard shortcut. So we click on that and, and so a whole new workspace opens up. And the first thing I wanna just bring your attention to here on the right hand side is the view menu icon. And you'll see here to the right, there's a little drop down arrow that you can click on. And there's a, there's a few various options here that you can work with. And so I recommend experimenting with all of these until you find one that really works for you. You'll probably find that on different images, certain options will work better than others. But for now, let's click on the overlay option and you'll see that this red overlay uh, appears. And this is showing you everything that is sitting outside of your current selection. It hasn't gone and painted your image red, so don't worry. It's just to, to show you, like I said, it sits as an overlay. And it's just to show you where your selection is currently at. And so to fix or rather fine tune the adjustment, we head on over here to the left and we can make use of any one of these tools. You'll notice some tools here that you are already familiar with that sit in, in the regular workspace, i.e. the quick selection tool. There's the lasso tool here, the pan tool, as well as the zoom tool. But for now, we're going to go on to this third option here, which is your brush tool. And you'll see here at the top in the options bar of this tool, you've got, again, you've got a plus and you've got a minus, as well as you can adjust the brush size, as well as the hardness of the tool. We'll keep it at its hardest for now. And let's make the brush a little bit bigger. And there's part areas of the lip of this candle that we want to include. So notice if we just click on here and start to brush our way around this area, we can begin to make we can begin to make a far more accurate selection. I really like using this method. And if we now want to subtract, we just head on over here to the second option here in the options bar. Click on that, and we can now start to brush away and all of the areas we don't want to include. 
and it's advisable that you spend some time here. I'm skimming through it a little bit to just get to illustrate to you how it works. But obviously you want to spend time here and get this quite accurate. And once you're happy, you can zoom on out. And then the next thing you want to ask yourself is, okay, how do I want to output the selection? And so what I do is I head on over to the right. Um, here at the bottom, there's a little option for output settings. If you're not seeing this, you might need to scroll down a little bit using the scroll bar on the side. If you're not seeing it like I'm seeing it here, click on the little drop down menu. Here is the option to the output to and I drop click down here and you can see it gives you a couple of different options. You can either now have a layer mask, you can have a whole new layer which would just be this candle area. You could even have a whole new document which would then just be the candle area. For now we're just going to stick on selection. I'll click on OK. Remember these marching ants. And so now we have what is still a fairly rudimentary selection, but accurate enough for now to demonstrate what I'm trying to show you. And as per our previous tutorials, we can now head on over to image adjustments, head on over to brightness and contrast, and we can make some fun. We can tweak these sliders until we're happy. Toggle the preview on and off. And if we're happy with the adjustments we've made, we click on OK. And so as not to save over the original file, we go on to File, scroll down to Save As, give the file a title that we're happy with, File Adjustments 2, and click on Save. And so really there was just a brief introduction of how to make use of the Select and Mask functionality in Photoshop. We, we kind of really zipped through it there. There's a lot of, you can play with in that workspace and I recommend that you do precisely that. And before you know it, you're going to master that workspace and take your images to a whole new level. And so that brings us to the end of not only session three, but also chapter five of Photoshop basics and working with adjustments. If you've gotten value out of this series, do give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, tell your friends about us, and we'll see you in the next chapter where we're going to discuss my personal favorite, and that is retouching. So until then, stay safe, be cool, and thanks for watching.